What was that for? Every time we do a cotton video, you're in here wheezing my Tootsie Rolls and trashing the game room. I wanted to try out the new green screen. It's like I'm in the game. Let's play two players. Sure, we can go two player after I finish showing everyone this cotton preview. How about now? You miss. Uh, yeah, well, I gotta gig up. The new Saturn Cotton Tribute is a really important release, and it'll be out in just a month at the end of September. And it's important because the Saturn games on this collection are not only very expensive, but you can't properly emulate them at home. Unless you own a Saturn and the physical games, or you have something like a mode and load the ROMs, emulating them is a mess. And that's why this release is a big deal for anyone that wants to play and enjoy them. So if you're a fan of the Cotton games or have never played the super fun Guardian Force, you may be interested in this new release coming to both PS4 and Switch. I can't wait any longer. I want more Cotton now. Then let's get this party started. <gasps> let's go! Cotton 2 and Boomerang are some of the most coveted games on the Saturn, and for good reason. Not only do they look and sound great, but their gameplay is both complex and unique in the world of shmups. A huge departure from the original, Cotton 2 looks like a shooter, but controls more like a fighting game on a broomstick, with emphasis on special moves and combos. The original Cotton was already complex for a shmup, with a main shot that you upgraded through a leveling system, and crystals that both increased your experience and provided you with magic spells to stock and use. You also had separate bombs to upgrade, and silk fairy familiars to stock, which you could unleash for damage. On top of that, each magic had a secondary function. Managing all those resources and stock made the game deep and fun, but also complex to get into and learn. Cotton 2 takes it to a whole nother level, not only adding more magic options, but replacing your fairy familiars with a slew of special attacks and moves, like a game of Street Fighter. You even have a health bar and can take multiple hits now before dying. You've got both upward and downward Hadouken motions that release fireball bursts, back forward and reverse motions for concentrated and spread blasts, double tap motions for throwing your bombs in different arcs and directions, press and holds and double taps for dashing and increasing your speed. You also have a grab attack which can throw just about anything in the game even steal weapons from this boss and launch it around. I hope you're either playing with an arcade stick or a really smooth pad, cause your thumb will hate you after a few rounds with this game. Luckily, the Saturn version makes this a lot easier with a hidden menu option that lets you map special moves to extra buttons on the controller, as pulling off all these moves in the heat of battle, like I did for this video, is difficult and painful, and that's when it actually works. But the most important and useful change in Cotton 2's gameplay is the bubble system. When you hit enemies with special moves, it seals them inside a bubble. You can then grab and use that bubble to throw into more enemies, which seals them too and creates chains, allowing you to clear the screen of enemies much faster than using brute force. These bubbles can then be picked up for experience points, or shot to become recovery willows and restore health. This throwing and bubble system is by far the most interesting mechanic of the game, and what makes it so much fun to play. You now have four weapon elements to choose from, red for fire, green for a homing wind attack, blue for reflective ice shards, and a powerful white element you don't get until the final stage. But even with all this weapon variety, 
trying to play Cotton 2 like a standard shooter without using special moves, sealing enemies and throwing them around isn't nearly as interesting. In fact, learning to play the way it was designed is almost a requirement. Not only is it not as fun otherwise, it'll seem impossible with your shots not doing enough damage and bosses and tanky enemies taking forever to kill. Add on your very large character sprite and trying to micro dodge through this game is an exercise in futility. You have to exploit your resources and moveset to make the harder sections more manageable. Otherwise, it's like playing a fighting game but only using your base punch and kick and never any combos. Every section is designed around experimenting with ways to use the enemies against each other and seemingly tanky mid-bosses can be exploited quickly with the right approach. Cotton 2 can be exceedingly entertaining, but just like a fighting game, not until you put in the time to learn all its mechanics and get comfortable with them. Between that and the bubble chaining system, the gameplay and scoring has more depth than almost any other shmup out there. And once you do get it down, just like the original, then you really get to enjoy the beautiful art design and creative levels. There's also a Saturn mode, which mixes up the stages with reskinned backdrops and boss appearance, giving you some variety to choose from once you finish the game and want to play through it again. You also unlock Apley as a playable character once you finish the game, and even if nothing will ever stack up to the brilliant music tracks of the original, probably one of the best game soundtracks of all time. The music here in Cotton 2 is still really well done and fits the game perfectly. Now it's not for everyone as it's truly a complex shmup, but if you love the series and enjoy the fantastical theme and characters, then it's definitely a must play. I just can't. I love cotton so much, but it's too complicated. I can't figure it out. Don't they have something easier that I can play? You actually read my mind because you're not the only person to think so. Some people just want to pick up and play without all the fuss and just dodge some damn bullets. The developer success heated those calls and one year later released Cotton Boomerang and it delivered on that promise and then some. Ooh, I get to choose characters now? Yeah, in Boomerang, you play as a threesome and you can tag team between them. Hey now, there's kids watching this episode. You missed again. Ah, uh, yeah, well, I really gotta be- oh! Boomerang doesn't mess around in showing you that it's a very different game right from the start. I've seen articles and reviews out there that say it's mostly the same as Cotton 2, and I'm not sure what game it is they're playing, because they're completely different to me. The graphics aren't just redone and improved, but the look of every stage is different, with new artwork and a remade layout. The enemy selection and patterns are also completely different, with them coming at you in much larger numbers and more aggressively right from the start, with a lot more bullets filling the screen. In return, you're given a lot more firepower that's easy to use. A reversal from the first game. While you can technically still use some button combos if you really wanted to, the special moves are now mapped to regular buttons. Your powerful forward burst is just a button press away, and you can use your magic an unlimited amount of times by pressing and holding the attack button. Same goes for your upward and downward shots. Everything feels like a more traditional shooter with plenty of heat at your disposal. So if you wanted to ignore the special attacks and combos and play it like a typical shmup, you absolutely could. You no longer have a health bar with one-shot kills, though you do pick up barriers throughout the levels that'll let you take an extra hit, so no more health bar to manage. That's offset by your new team of three characters, each with their own shot type, that you can swap back and forth until you run out of change icons. 
and whenever you tag in, it sets off a screen clearing bomb as a bonus. Unlimited firepower and magic sounds like it would make the game easier, but that's not the case. Easier to pick up and play, maybe, but not finish. Boomerang is much more aggressive in how it attacks you, requiring a lot more bullet dodging to get through. I definitely found the smaller Silk to be my favorite character, as her base shot still kicks butt, and her size makes it easier to squeeze between bullets. The music in the game is also redone and different, and in my opinion even better than Cotton 2. The fire stage that remixes one of the best original tunes is always a pleasure to play. The question is, which game is better? And that really depends. I think that most would find Boomerang better, as it's easier to just play and is faster with revamped visuals. Since many players won't put in the time to figure out the complexity of Cotton 2, they'll prefer this remake. Bosses and their battles are also improved, especially the final boss, which is far more elaborate and interesting than the first go-round. So there are definitely improvements that make Boomerang a better experience. But the simplification is also its Achilles heel, as it neuters the most interesting mechanic of the original game, the incredibly fun and useful bubble system. Now that's not to say it's not here. You can still grab and seal enemies and throw them around for chains and points. But in Boomerang, you have so much firepower that their main purpose is only for scoring. You could blast your way through the game and barely use it. It's no longer integral to the gameplay. Whereas in Cotton 2, even attempting to play without constantly utilizing the power of the bubble chains to quick kill enemies and tanky bosses won't get you very far. Cotton 2 is a much more methodical, resource management oriented game that requires proper use of bubble sealing and your special moves. Boomerang gives you the option, but is a much more frantic shooter that puts all of your attention on firepower and staying alive by any means necessary. If anything, more like the first game in the series. So in my mind, both of these games are very different from the gameplay experience itself to the varied graphics and music. I find myself coming back to both of them, depending on my mood. They aren't just the same game, slightly different on this collection, but very unique from each other and worth having both, and can't be properly emulated without all sorts of problems. For that reason, I consider this an important release. I realize that the cotton games on this collection are the main event, and for good reason. But as much as I do enjoy both, you might be surprised to learn that neither are my favorite game on this collection. Ooh, blasphemy. All right, all right. So why do I enjoy this next game, Guardian Force, so much? Because it is the most fast paced, frantic, and intense shooting game on the collection. It's an absolute gem, hover tank, multiplayer mayhem, that hasn't been done better since. And it'll blow you away. Guardian Force is like Ikari Warriors, only if you are riding on top of a hover tank like a madman, slinging around a hot green yo-yo of death to the beat of Pulp Fiction. There's only one game where you can do that, and that game is Guardian Force. It's very much a shooter with an auto-scrolling screen and an onslaught that comes at you from every angle. It's simple, it's fast, and it's oh so easy and fun to just pick up and play a counterpoint to the deep and complex cotton games. I'd say it's probably one of my top five favorite Saturn shmups to still go back and play. And the only reason I'm playing it emulated is I don't own the expensive original, since I'll be able to play it on this collection in just a month. The two gameplay elements that separate Guardian Force from most other shooters is your rotating turret and the multi-directional scrolling. 
You can set the shoulder buttons on the Saturn pad to rotate the turret left and right, which is how I prefer it. And the turret only stops at 45 degree angles. So you don't have that weird issue of pointing slightly off from where you want to be. You can hold down the buttons, but quick, precise taps will get your aim exactly where you want it, in a hurry. The screen is always changing its scrolling direction, going from up, to right, to down as you navigate through the levels. Coupled with your rotating turret and enemies coming in from every angle, it makes for dynamic, hectic gameplay. And to the game's credit, it never feels unfair like some similar games that attack you from the sides without actually seeing what nailed you. The threats here are always obvious as they enter the screen space before taking shots at you. Another highlight of the game are the weapons, which not only are a lot of fun to cycle through, but all have their ideal applications, making certain areas much easier or harder if you're caught with the wrong one. And you can't talk about Guardian Force without mentioning its coolest weapon, the brutal green yo-yo of death, tearing through metal like a hot knife through butter. If you ever wanted to have a chainsaw on a tether and swing it around, this game will scratch that itch. Just don't try it at home, you've been warned. It's especially useful for the larger enemies and bosses, doing sustained, massive damage when left spinning in place. Much like the Cotton games, you level up your weapon here too as you progress, with a max level of 10. Dying brings your level down a notch, but there's plenty of carnage to be had and experience to go around. You also have a standard shot which always fires in the direction you're moving, separate from your turret, as well as different types of missiles you pick up for some added firepower. Of special note are the bosses, which are absolutely awesome. Every one is a large, multi-phased, segmented affair with all sorts of transformations as you destroy their armor. Instead of sticking to the lower half of the screen as you normally would in most shmup boss fights, you'll need to take full advantage of the entire play area, often playing above and to the side, to escape some of the volleys and special attacks that they unleash. And while that sounds like it would be difficult to get used to, it feels quite natural, and almost anyone will be flying around the screen in no time, popping off in every direction. The game is pretty brutal, and so is the scoring system where you simply can't miss any of the medals to be picked up. Not that different from a game like Neo's X. Keep chaining the pickups and each medal increases in value. Miss just one and you're back to square one and starting all over. Guardian Force is another game that has emulation issues, with the game freezing on me about several levels in during my recording here. Really a bummer as I wanted to show everyone a bit farther into the game so I guess you'll have to wait for the full review when I can play it on the new release. What's perplexing about Guardian Force is why it wasn't way more popular. It's so outstandingly fun and easy to pick up, even more so two players with a friend and hard to put down. The biggest culprit in my opinion is the presentation. It's not that Guardian Force is a bad looking game, it's actually quite cool but it doesn't have a unique look or design of its own that makes it memorable or anything over the top that you immediately notice. Except for that yo-yo, of course. Maybe if they called the game Yo-Yo of Death, it would have sold a lot better. Likewise, the audio and the music is cool, but almost last gen with a soundtrack that's actually PCM versus the more common CD tracks of the time. But speaking of music, it can't just be me that immediately thinks of Pulp Fiction whenever I play this level. What an obvious copy of the now famous Masirlu theme. But you know what? It works so damn good. And like I said at the start, there's only one game that'll let you do that. And that game is Guardian Force.
This Cotton Saturn tribute is already up for pre-order on multiple sites like Play Asia and will ship soon on September 30th. They're also adding a bunch of features like rewinds, replays, slow motion, and more. So if this collection looks like your cup of tea and you want to pick it up, remember, anything that you purchase, games or merchandise, through any of my links on my channel, from now on, 50%, half of all the profits automatically go into the new Indie Schmuck and Community Fund. I've been working on some really cool and fun merch coming down the pipe very soon, so stay tuned. And if you haven't already seen my previous Cotton videos, like the full review of the reboot, or the ultimate comparison of all the original games versus the arcade, including the awesome PC Engine port, you can check it all out right here.